Yeah, good morning to everyone. I thank IPPI for giving me opportunity for expressing my thoughts and I thank my management also for permitting for the same. The question being discussed since yesterday is whether we want to serve the load or shed the load. The reply from the system operator is system operator wish to use this ancillary services to serve the load. We understand what is the value of the load loss. We understand what the load shedding costs uh, inconvenience to the consumers and we understand also what it creates uh, economy in the country. Now, the meaning of ancillary services is to provide support and in the regulations it has been given to provide support to whom? To provide support in reliability and security and maintaining the power quality. And in the regulation when the something has come, then they have provided the provisions also from, from where these services will be used. It will be used from the application of the fund collected through UI. That is providing ancillary services including but not limited to the load generation balance. Then NLDC and RLDC they have to identify these services and uh, will go accordingly. NLDC has prepared the paper and has submitted to CRC. Now, right now, what is the present scenario? We have the STO limitation, fragmentary capacity. On one hand, we have the generation which is undispatched. On the other hand, we have the need of the loads and utilities. And matchmaking, in the STO, there has to be matchmaking, means there has to be schedule generation and there is schedule draw also. We have the balancing mechanism or UI. Now, there are the limitations on the UI, that is the limits on the UI volume in a block, 15 minute time block. We cannot go more than 20% and overall a day in more, not more than 3% when there is a frequency below 49.8. UI, there is price uncertainty because price varies according to the frequency and if uh, there is a frequent start stop operation because price is varied. Now, what is the impact of all this? The impact is the frequent unplanned load shedding and the value of the load loss. Value of the load loss is very important because it affects the economy of the country. What is the need for today? Need is the flexibility and customization. Flexibility means when one generation is going down, another generation should come up. And we have to harness all available generations before going for the load shedding. And ancillary services is one of the means to mitigate the load shedding. Now this is the power for the supply positions. This is the FAP 2013 report. So this is the CA. And if you see here, overall in the country we are facing around 8% loss 8% shortage in the energy and 8% shortage in the peak demand. And if we see Southern region has, has, is having the double digit shortage deficit in the peak demand as well as in the uh, energy. In Northern region, around 8% is the deficit uh, in energy and 9% is the peak demand. Now see the frequency curve. April to Ju July, period is a critical period for a system operator. This is the period when there is a maximum demand in the grid. And if you see the last year, what, what was the thing? Frequency duration curve, you see that below 49.57, there is a 39% of the time frequency was below 49.7. Now, question is why we need ancillary services for India? Reliability, security and stability, which is very important for a system operator. Power quality, is, it is important, not only for the system operator, but it is important for the consumers also. That is, it affects the equipment there. It is important for the generators also because the life of the generator is dependent on the power quality. Restructure power system. We have now generation, transmission and distribution different. When the, all the vertically unit, units were there, then the, the cost ancillary and cost of the ancillary were implied in the energy cost. Now, lack of primary, secondary and tertiary response. It's a, you just see here. Now, as per the IEGC, all the generators has to be in the free governor mode of the operation or restrictive mode of the governor mode of the operation. But when, when there is a tripping in the system and when we analyze through the frequency response characteristic, we find that the, all the generators are not in the RGMO or FGMO mode. <coughs> the, uh, we, I want to add in here, though the cost of this uh, governors are already implied in the annual fixed cost for this tariff has been determined for the generator, but things are not coming up. Secondary control, it is, it is basically missing by design in our system because we have the loose power poles and we allow the deviations. So secondary control is basically the automatic generation control. 
and the third uh, tertiary control. Tertiary control is basically when there is a manual intervention in dispatch and the commitment. Now what are our targets? What we want to achieve is to bring the ancillary services. It is that we have to harness the fragmented generation. We, uh, we want to have a more uh, peaking power because we have a more and more peaked stations. Base load is the base generation is there, but peaking generation is we are lacking. And it will give the opportunity for the generators to help that grid. They will get the monetizing incentive and they, that will mitigate the load changing in the value of the load loss will be saved. Now, review of congestion. Ancillary services can be used for the review of congestion also. Just I will take an example. This is the kayak generation. If you see uh, when there is a <coughs> market splitting, the rates in the power exchange for the S2, they are going more than 15 rupees or so. But kayak generation is hardly costing 9 rupees. What is happening? Kayak generation is being idle and the people are paying it uh, 15 rupees for this uh, market splitting. But these ancillary services can be used for the kayak generation and the, so that the customers will pay less and the, there will be relief in the congestion also. Now, renewable generation. Everybody knows that renewable is the top of the day. Now, we have to handle the variation. There is a challenge before the system operation to handle the variation, the demand and the generation. And the renewables, they have the characteristics of uncertainty. <coughs> so, to handle all these things, ancillary services may come into the rescue. Now, pump storage plants, we know. The pump storage plants, they are basically, uh, we, we are not using much, they, but they can be also used as ancillary services to provide the peaking load capacity and even they can complement the, this uh, renewable generation integration. Now classification, okay, there are three reasons already covered. Now section 27, <coughs> now if we as a system operator, if we apply for this ancillary service, let us examine whether we are doing, whether going, going in the right direction or not. As per the clause 27, it, that no regional RDC shall be engaged in the trading activity. When the frequency support and services is there, the role of the system operator will be restricted to the only to the providing uh, taking the dispatch decision. So they will not be involved in the trading or something like that. And its facilitation will be through power exchanges. Section 28, role of the RLDC. That is basically optimum scheduling and dispatch of the electricity and uh, keeping the accounts of the electricity transmitted to the grid. Section 32, role of SLDC. Optimum scheduling and dispatch of the within the state and keeping the accounts of the electricity transmitted within the state. Now let us see what is the existing mechanism. Existing mechanism is the energy routing is done on the 15 time, 15 years time block and there are three parts of the tariff. That is capacity charge, energy charge and the UI charge. Capacity charge because depending on the availability of the generators and <coughs> energy charge as per the schedule and UI charge, the deviation from the schedule. Now UI mechanism. This right now, this frequency curve, the UI curve, just see the things here. Is the frequency curve? If you see, there are three important things here at the uh, at the 50 hertz, the rate is 1 rupee 65 pesa, that is the average energy cost of the coal and lignite generating station. At 49.8, the cost is the uh, 4 rupees 50 pesa, that is the incentive the generators to pick up their generation. Uh, and after meeting the fixed and variable charges and, and the maximum charge is 9 rupees that is the highest of the energy cost now there is a UI pool people pay to the pool and people take the money from there and the, this is the thing when the how much money is being paid by the, the various <coughs> utilities now here, here you see from 50 from 50.2 hertz to 49.7 uh, it is a normal curve but if somebody is overdrive beyond <coughs> less at less than 49.7, they have to pay 20% of the charges fixed at 49.5, that is 9 rupees. And you can see here at 49.5. You can see here at uh, a frequency at 49.5 and there will be charges of uh, 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 10 rupees 80 pesa and uh, at 49.2, uh, 12 rupees 60 pesa and below 49.2 it is uh, 18 rupees and there is a capping of the generator uh, uh, for the um, for the generators also and that capping is defined at the 4, 4 rupees 21 pesa and if the generators if they if they generate less so they have to again pay the additional UI charges in the ratio of 10, 20 and 40 percent of the maximum value fixed of the 4 rupees 21 pesa 
and if the if the some now how the receipt side if you see the buyers they will get the money as per the frequency card the maximum money they will get the nine rupees if you see here but the somebody if overdrawn they will pay the eighteen rupees that is I just want to bring this slide just to say that surplus is being generated in the UI account people will add forty nine by two people will pay eighteen rupees but if somebody is underdrawn he will get only nine rupees and then the ceiling of the for the this coal and lignite generators that is rupees four rupees twenty one paisa and buyers just to avoid the gaming we have in the UI curve there is a if buyer is drawing less than uh, if underdrawal is less than ten percent or twenty five two hundred fifty megawatt whichever is less they will there is a cap in four rupees fifty paisa again there is a for for the seller if they are generating more than twenty percent and uh, subject to the hundred five percent of the <coughs> installed capacity they will also there is a cap in four rupees fifty paisa Besides this, there is a very there is a provision in the UI regulation for the informed power before the COD, and this informed power has been capped at one rupee sixty five sixty five paisa for the cooling light and hydro, and it is two rupee sixty paisa for the <coughs> for the ABM, and uh, three rupee thirty paisa for the coal oblig RNG imported coal oblig RNG. Now yes, you see the UI how the UI billing is. Uh, Varying over the years together, if you see in the in the 2012-13, it has come down from 9883 to 8984, and the best part of this thing, up to 31st July, it was up to 6250. Means in the four four months, UI amount was 6250 crores, and in the less eight months, it was hardly 2200, 2700. So, and we are expecting 2013-14, this UI will further go down and. A settlement system. A settlement is basically who will pay to whom and for how much quantum of power and how much money is to be, be to be paid. And a settlement is done by RDC at the regional level and by SRDC at the state level. Now, this is an example. Suppose a trader settles into an agreement with two A and B, and suppose he has the he purchases power from A and sells to B. At he purchases at two B and sells at two B to twenty five. Now, actually, power flow is the A generates from the eight megawatt, but B draws twelve megawatt. How? What will be the settlement for that? Now, trader will get the money from A and B at the rate of uh, for ten megawatt at two rupees and and two rupees twenty paisa, and A will pay to the UI pool for the UI for two megawatt, and B will also pay to the UI pool for two megawatt because B has overdrawn and B has underdrawn. Now. Existing, what is what is like mechanism right now? Schedule generation is there, schedule draw is there. UI is there, UI is there. But frequency, frequency, <coughs> FSS, frequency support ancillary services. Generation will be scheduled, but draw will be under UI. F FSS focus is we are what is our focus? Focus is to stabilize, stabilize the frequency by utilizing the left over margin. What under this umbrella will be the liquid fuel, diesel based generation, merchant IBU CDD. Can you just elaborate? Yeah, sellers will be scheduled, and the who will draw them, they will pay the money to the UIP. How will they generate the money? Yeah, I will come to the ask. Okay, I will come to that slide. See, this is a one example. Just see. there is one seller, hundred megawatt schedule is there. Seller one, they have schedule is hundred megawatt. Schedule under FSS is fifteen megawatts. UI is five megawatt. He is generating hundred twenty megawatt. There is one buyer. He is buying 75 megawatt at the head, and is drawing UI of 12 megawatt. There is buyer two, 25 megawatt, 8 megawatt total 23. Total is 120. <coughs> Now, buyer one will pay to the UI pool for 12 megawatt at the UI rate. Buyer two will pay to the UI pool for 8 megawatt at the UI rate. Now, for this seller, he will get from the UI pool. For 15 megawatt, because he uh, he should do under FSS is for 15 megawatt at the FSS clearing rate, and he will also get the money for 5 megawatt and for the UI rate because he is generating UI there. Yeah, what will the framework of FSS? It will be facilitation through the through power exchange only. There will be new product in the power exchange. And there will be separate category of the user groups, and the registration is required. 
they will be the part of the existing settlement system and the standing clearance from the concern SNDC only or LDC is required. Procedure, it will be the competitive bidding procedure and window will open after the closure of the day ahead and sellers will bid in the, can bid in either of the exchange and they have to declare the bid area quantum division and price. Adherence to the environmental philosophy, that is TX will not reveal the identity of the sellers until until this fact decision is taken by the uh, uh, system operator. And sellers in their market with unclear bids and other sellers with surplus can be the prospective participant. If you see from this slide, what how much lost sell volume is there? Lost sell volume is the sell bid unconstrained minus unconstrained market clear volume. You say sometimes it is more than 5000 MWH is being lost because there is no matchmaking. Now, how the, this uh, the bid should be combined? They will be combined for every time block of the next day, and it will be based on the bid, uh, staking will be the based on the bid, uh, bid price, and there will be the overall optimization on the national basis by the system operator. Now, how the dispatch will be under FSS? It will be the under <coughs> system operation will anticipate that uh, anticipate the deficit and give the signal when the frequency is below the IHC 49.7, that is the lower limit of the IHC frequency band and it will be on the base of the merit of the bids and this patch certainly will be at least for the 12 time blocks to prevent the stop, stop operation, frequent start, stop operation but there can be the things, there can be the, some backing down during the state, uh, 12 time blocks then compensation to the exchange or the fixed cost will be given to the seller but there can be the dispatch in case of congestion when, when there is a dispatch in case of congestion then pan India merit order may be discounted because in, the, in that case somebody who has quoted more but he will get uh, dispatch if he is relieving the congestion and uh, whenever there is a decision on the dispatch ATC of the TTC of the inter and inter regional will be honored and consent from the sailor will be taken before dispatching because uh, the sailor might have taken decision to schedule it otherwise also because he, he, bid, he has bid in the uh, yeah, previous day uh, to, uh, in the real time he might have bid, he might have committed to somebody else before uh, giving the dis uh, dispatch instruction, consent from the seller will be taken by the system operator. Now, scheduling and accounting. Scheduling will be routed through the power exchanges. And PX will reveal the injection point, public identity of the identified bidders. And this dispatch bids will be incorporated in the seller of the schedule. And there will be unmatched one to one schedule. Sellers will be scheduled, buyers will not be scheduled. And the dispatch bid quantum uh, attribute will be towards the draw of the pool. There will be a fictitious notional entity, that is a pool and the drive of the user for dispatch power will pay back to the, to the service in the form of the UI charges and scheduling will be the as per present practice on the regional basis and by HLC for their embedded players this I have already covered <coughs> now settlement settlement if there are two options is uniform pricing or pay as many but we find, find that uniform pricing is a better choice because it will create the competition in the market and the price will be the based on the as paid to the costless generator who was called in the in the in last for that respective time block. And it will be the energy based settlement. There are two options, capacity and energy based settlement. But energy based settlement is a better choice because there can be the frequent call for the sellers and there uh, it is a less uh, it is a economical to the consumers. And upper limit of the CIC UI vector can be the ceiling price that is presently 9 rupees. Now payment to the seller through, will be through power exchange Metraf will, means uh, the system operator will transfer the funds from their UI pool to the power exchange on the next day and exchange will pay to the sellers on the same day and scheduling transmission charges, DOC charges and losses will be as applicable to the short STO transaction Voltage control ancillary services See, this voltage control ancillary is basically to, to maintain the voltage within the permissible limit In, If we see the present IAGC, it has already seen the if the voltage is beyond 103% or 97%, then they have to pay, <coughs> and then the, the person who is supporting the MBR uh, the, or, uh, or driving the MBR, they have to pay as per the rates. Uh, presently, rates are 11 paisa per kVRH, but in this, it has been written that except generating station, generating station means generating stations, they are not getting compensated through this voltage control ancillary services. But so that is the reason they, they are reluctant to operate in synchronous condensation mode when they are asked because of they have to meet the affection and vintage losses. So if we, if we want to induce the generators for this voltage control and sensory services that for, for the voltage control then they can be <coughs> they can be appropriate compensated. Black star. Black star is many everything in black when we have to start. 
and right now we have a certain identified units are there and it is mandatory service as per the CA regulation. But when the person who is supplying the black star, he is incurring the expenditure regarding the <coughs> cost of the operators, routine maintenance, cost of the fuel, equipment cost is all okay, it is covered in the fixed charge and in the generation tariff, but they are not reimbursed for their operating costs. So there is a need for the black start as an insulation visit for voluntary procurement from the uh, genetic units. And he used, this is a power survey. If you see the 18th electric power survey, where we are heading. And if you see in the 2021-22, northern region demand is going to be the 86,461 and all India demand will cross to the 2,83,470. We have a lot of generations right now, but fuel linkage is a problem, domestic coal is a problem. Now, answer to all is renewables. This is the All India Wind Energy Generation. If you see in the 2011, 12, and 12, 13, and it is one and a half time more than that what was in 2011, 12, then 2012, 13. And if you see the, during the, this monsoon period, we need the maximum. And maximum in generation in all India places is coming to the 224 MU. And this is generally Rajasthan. If you see the generation in the Rajasthan, if in month, it is very good for the system operator because during the around 18 hours if you see the generation is getting picked up, wind generation is getting picked up and it is very conducive for meeting our in peak demand. Now integration. Now our, <coughs> we, have, uh, uh, we have set a target of RPO 10% nationally by 2015 and this renewable generation capacity has to be increased from 26.36 uh, gigawatt to 45 gigawatt. Already there are challenges before the grid operators for uh, managing their frequency and reactive power. And this, this renewable generation will, bring, a more, will be the, bring more challenge to the system operator and the ancillary service make, will come, may come into the rescue for the integration of the renewable generation. Now, summary, ancillary services, they are, they are separate from the basic services as such they have to be remunerated appropriately. Now, what we will get? We will get a discovery of the information. We will get the information regarding how much undispatched generation we have and what is the price. We will get the discovery what is the spinning reserve of level, what is the price. As per the policy, we, at the national level there has to be a spinning reserve of 5%, but right now we don't have. Home ground solution for the meeting the mitigating the load shedding. Competitive bidding in the power exchange. Cost to the customer should be on the UI price. And merit order dispatch, price lesser will be dispatched first. Overall country wise optimization will be there. Yeah. Operations flexibility <coughs> for the drives. Drives can decide whether they want to be get booked for other ancillary services or they want to initiate some other actions. Generators, they will they will respond to the price signals. They will get incentive for the response in helping the grid. UI ancillary, they are the basically two pillars of the market and they should coexist. As we know for a human for a human being, we need the four pillars that is the physical, mental, financial and spiritual. In the same way power sector has also the four pillars that is the imbalances, UI, congestion management, ancillary services and scheduling and dispatch. And the reliance on FS as a routine practice to be avoided. It should not be that we are shifting from UIC and then we start relying on frequency support and services. It should be used as a last UI should be used as a last resort and the frequency in the device on a <coughs> frequency support should be used as a whenever it is required. With the availability of FSS, frequency curve will get further smoother. And it will give a power signal for the power signal for the investment to the generators. Now we forward as yesterday discussed by Chairman uh, CRC, the staff paper by CRC will be there. Now we need a national dialogue. We don't need a debate for this. We need a dialogue because all the stakeholders have their points and they, we have to reach a consensus and give them the, uh, uh, give the inputs to the CRC. Now, capacity building SLDC is required because ancillary services will be costing to the drive utilities. Now, procedure by, will be the, by the nodal agency or an NDC will be there and again it will be subject to the approval of the Commission. Implementation and thereafter monitoring of the actual delivery, that is also important. And last, demand response, that is more important. Demand, the load serving utility should also participate in the frequency support ancillary service. And for that we need the smart metering, that is two-way communication.
last but not the least, NLDC has to be indemnified because decisions will be taken by the NLDC and these will be the based on the requirement of the system, not any commercial. Somebody may be losing and somebody may be gaining also, but NLDC uh, or NLDC has to be indemnified. Thank you.